live from BBC Studio One in Chicago, Illinois. We're looking for America's next great counselor, where counselors from all over America will be competing for a scholarship to the prestigious Idrock School of Counseling, as well as a one-year contract with the esteemed counseling firm Friedman & Associates. And now, here's your host, Vixen Winterfield. Good evening, America. For the past several months, we've been accepting applications from counselors all over the United States who would love to be called America's Next Great Counselor. Each week, a different patient will present his or her problem to give to the counselors to give their best advice. They'll each have 60 seconds, and while they're giving advice, the other counselors will wear soundproof headphones so that their advice will not be imitated. Then, at the end of each show, it'll be up to you, America, to vote. Uh, let's introduce your counselors. I'm originally from South Carolina but I moved around a lot because of my military dad. I'm a graduate of Delaware University at Dover with an associate's degree in counseling. I am currently enrolled in Trudeau School of Ongoing Counseling. I hope to graduate one day and open a practice in Providence, Nevada, specializing in gambling addictions. I must admit, I have very little formal education in counseling. I have a couple of online classes and I've spent an extended amount of time at the library reading how-to publications on the subject of counseling. I'm from a city so nice they named it twice, New York, New York. I graduated from the Abigail Van Buren Junior College with a minor in psychology, hoping to have a family practice and write a weekly advice column. There they are, and one of them will be named America's Next Great Counselor. Now this week's theme is Truthful Message to Authority. And we have a patient today who's struggling to tell her boss potentially devastating news. Here she is, and please help me welcome her, Julie Dubik. Well, hello, everyone. I don't know where to start. The owner is heavy-handed and will fire anyone who uh, gives him advice that he doesn't want to hear. About a month ago, he assigned me a research project, and... Uh, after a couple weeks, the data indicated that this is not a venture that our uh, company should undertake. After a couple weeks, the data indicated that this is a venture that our company should not take. And I don't want to lose my job because I can't impart good advice to the owner. What should I do? Okay, counselors, you've heard Julie's problems, and now it's up to you to help her. Up first, we have Dash McCoy. And could everyone else please put on their headphones? Thank you, Vixen. Hello, Julie. First thing, if he starts getting agitated when you give your report, stand up straight, look him in the eye, and in a strong voice, ask him, What are we here for? Are we here to bow down to your wishes? Or are we here to make money? I am telling you, this little venture you want to take us on will lead to nothing but failure and the demise of the company. If you can't listen to what I'm telling you, that only shows that you can't handle the truth. Thank you, Dash McCoy, for that forceful counsel. Up next, we have Marky Vacher. And could everyone else please put on their headphones? Thank you, Vixen. All right, Julie, so let me get this straight. If you give your boss a negative report, then you'll still get fired? Yes, and I need my job. All right, I guess there's only one choice then. You're going to have to tell your boss that everything's fine and that they should just go ahead with, with the project and just sail with it. Thank you, Marky. Up next, we have Chloe Flax. Thank you, Vixen. Well, hello there, Julie. I believe you are in a no-win situation. My advice to you is to put all the research in an envelope, slip it under your boss's door, and then when you talk to him, sugarcoat it as much as you can. Thank you, Chloe. Our final counsel for today will be Miss Marina Crusher. Thank you, Vixen. And thank you, Julie, for allowing me the chance to help you in your time of need. Did he start the business from the ground up, or did he inherit it? He did inherit it. It was in deep debt, but then he brought it back up. Did he do this by himself, or did he have other trusted employees that helped him with the rebuilding? Of course, he did have help. I think you need to calmly and firmly remind him of the hard times when the company was on the brink of disaster. You need to remind him that you're here to help him succeed. Once you've said this, calmly show him the research 
and point out to him the reasons why you think that his venture would not work. Thank you, counselors. Now, America, it's up to you. Who do you think gave the best advice tonight? Let us know on our Facebook page, America's Next Right Counselor, or by calling or texting us at 1-800-100-0000. From here in Chicago, have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow.